Hi everybody, uh, welcome to a short little video on um, a review of some of the commands that we've learned in BASIC and uh, a few more that you will be able to use. Okay, so um, here we go. Okay, so um, the commands that we've used so far, we have used print, which displays something to the screen. This can be numbers or string or a variable. Um, we've used input, which gets user input from the keyboard. This can be numbers or a string. Uh, a string, of course, is letters and, and numbers mixed. We uh, used if-then statements, uh, and those were used to uh, together, if and then, to redirect the program flow or perform some sort of command based on the value of the variable. Like, uh, I think yesterday we printed out um, x is negative or the, the product is negative or something like that. The command end ends the program. And we did use clear. Uh, we didn't really talk about what it does, but uh, clear resets all the variables to their uh, to be nothing, essentially. Um, we used home, which clears the screen and puts the cursor at the top left of the screen. That cursor is the little blinking thing. Um, we used the go to command, and we were able to have our program go to a certain line number. Um, we did some math on some, some variables and numbers, and um, we did multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Um, of course, multiplication is that asterisk, and division, um, this is incorrect here, this should be a slash, a forward slash. Um, let me go ahead and, well, I'm going to change that later. Uh, we use the rem command to remark or make comments in our code, and when we were doing if-then statements, we uh, used a few of these comparisons. We, uh, we checked to see if something was less than zero. But all of these will work. Uh, we can see if something is greater than or equal to zero or any number, uh, if it's less than or equal to some number or any of that. Uh, so a command that we didn't use, uh, but we did talk about, was the for next step command. Now, that's one command, but it's it actually it shows up on different lines of code. So um, it could be a little confusing to. Um, to use. And what it does is it creates a loop and it starts at a, a number that you tell it and it ends when you want it. Okay. Uh, in order to do in order to do this, we're going to need a variable. So um, you're going to have to pick some variable. I like to use either L for loop or I for iteration. Um, and that variable is going to keep track of what number of the loop that we're on. Uh, of course, these are pretty powerful because computers basically are were created to do something over and over and over and over again. And a for next step loop will allow us to, to do that. Okay. So uh, let's get to an example of this. My Chrome tab is right here. Hopefully you can See this? Uh, I don't know if you can, but uh, what I have here is a um, program that I set up that shows how a for next step loop works. Okay. Um, of course, these first couple of lines are just—they're um, just remarks or comments. And then I clear all the variables and return the cursor to home, to home which is up here. <clears throat> but then what I do is I say, okay, uh, I tell the user to enter a starting value. Now, this is something you haven't seen before, um, this little semicolon at the end of a print statement. And what that does is it allows the next thing that prints out to be on the same line. So it's a little nicer to look at. So when input SV, my variable is going to be SV, starting value, um, puts that little question mark up there, it's going to be on the same line as enter starting value. So it gets some value from the user that they can start the loop at. And it says, 
uh, enter ending value. So the, the user's going to enter where they want their loop to end at. And um, then there's this thing called step size. And it asks them for the step size. And what that is is it's the, um, the distance between each... Uh, iteration numerically. So um, if I wanted to count to 10 by twos, I'd go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The step size there was 2. Or if I wanted to count to from, from 10 to 20 by threes, I would say 10, 13, 16, 19. Now, of course, the, the next number would be 22, but that's past 20, so it's not going to get there. Um, the step side would be the step size there would be three. Um, <clears throat> so I get all these values from the user, and then I actually set up my loop. And you'll see here it says four. So this is part of my four next loop. So this is a keyword. I equals SV to EV. So what that means is, of course, SV is the starting value that I input, that the user input. EV is the ending value. So what it's going to do is each time it gets to this, this line 50, <clears throat> it's going to um, change the value of I. It's going to start at SV, and then it's going to add SS, which is the step size, each time it gets here. Okay, and um, this line 60, all it does is it prints out I squared. And this line that says next I, remember it's a four next step loop. Uh, when, it, when the computer says next I or the program says next I, what that does is it goes back to the top of this loop and it does the next iteration. So it, it's going to add SS to the value of i, and then do whatever's in here again. Okay, uh, so it does this however many times that I want it to, and then the program ends. So let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so enter starting value. Notice the question marks on the same line as the text that I printed out, and that's because of this semicolon here. So my starting value I'll say is one. My ending value, I'll say, is 10. And my step size, I'm going to say, is 2. So this is going to count from 1 to 10 by 2s. And then it's going to square each value that it, it comes up with. Okay. So the first one's going to be 1. And then the next time through the loop, it's going to be 3. And the next time through the loop, it should be you see where it's going? Um, five, and then seven, and then nine. It's not going to print out 10 squared because it never actually becomes 10. Oops. Put the enter in the wrong spot here. Here we go. So it's one squared, three squared, five squared, seven squared, nine squared, and then the next iteration of the loop, uh, i equals 11. So once i is past this ending value, past this ending value, it, uh, it it jumps out of the loop and goes to end. Okay, that is a four next step loop. Let's see if I can get back to my Google feed here. Everything's in uh, full screen mode here. So present. I want to do my presentation. I made a whole presentation for this. Hmm. Can't be done. Window. No. 
forgive me for this delay. What I want to do is Okay, and present this. Okay, so that's an example of a four next loop that took longer to to change back to my presentation than it did to explain all of that. Um, so now we're going to talk about the averaging of three numbers program and a, and a different way to do this for any number of numbers, okay? So again, I stop presenting, and I want to present Chrome tab. So this is the averaging of three numbers. Um, I wanna do this for any number of numbers though. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to say program that averages any number of numbers. And that's all the same, so I can kind of delete all this, and we'll start from scratch. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to have the user input a number multiple times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to tell the user that they can, when they're done entering numbers, they can enter some special number that, that we've predetermined, like negative one or something like that. So, um, typo there. Let's see here. So, 20. I'm going to say, um, print this program. Average any number of numbers. Then print enter the numbers you want averaged negative one to end. So when I do print, quote, quote, I just print the blank line on the screen. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat over and over and over again this input command. But I, I'm going to want to keep track of what they've input and how many numbers they've input. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the number count, so C, equals zero, and this represents uh, the number of numbers. Um, I'm going to have a, a tally. I'm going to set that equal to zero. So rem the tally. And a tally is just the total value of the things I've entered. And then I'm going to say 70. Input, say, x. Right? So this is asking asking the people to the user to input some numbers or a number. And say if x equals negative one, then I'm going to put a little placeholder here. I'm going to just say go to a th then go to one thousand. So that's line 1,000. I'm actually going to go back and change that later on when I figure out what line number I really wanted to go to, but it's a good placeholder. So um, 90. So if they don't enter a negative 1, that means they've entered a number that they want to keep. So I want to say that I want to add that to the tally. So I want to say T tally equals T plus X. Okay, so what, what that's going to do is it's going to add whatever they input into X to the tally. 
but I also want to increase the number of numbers that they've um, they've entered. So I'm going to say C equals C plus one. And that's going to add one to the value of C. Okay. So once I've done that, I can actually go and get another number. I can tell the, the program to go to line 70, and that that's, should be getting another number. So I don't need this to be line 1,000. I can make it this line 110. The user is um, entering numbers. So if they don't enter any numbers, like uh, the if the first thing they enter is negative one, then we have nothing to, to add. We have nothing to average. So we're going to say if, uh, let's see here, x equals, sorry, if c equals zero, that means that they haven't entered any numbers, then I just want to go to... Again, I'm going to put placeholder here. 1,000. 130. So if C isn't zero, that means they entered some numbers. Um, so I want to print out print average is, and put that semicolon again. And we'll put this all in the same line. Print T over. C. So the tally over the number of numbers. 140. Um, I can say end. And then I can change this to line 140. Now let's let's see if this works. So I did clear home, so let's see, run. Okay, so this program will average any number of numbers. Enter the numbers you want averaged, negative 1 to end. So let's try the, the negative 1 right off the bat and see what it does. Okay, program ends. Good, that's what I thought it would do. So we try running it again, and we enter 10 and 20. Now, if I end it here, I know that the average should be 15. So let's see what the, the program says. Okay, good. So far, so good. Um, and if I enter one, two, three, the average should be, let's see here, that's two, right? All right, looks like my averages are working out correctly in 93, 56, 28, 21, 100, 99, 95, negative one. I trust it. So those are some examples of some things that you can use in your programs. Okay. So let me stop presenting here. Go back to here. And let's see, present this. Okay, so let's see. We reviewed some commands. We learned some new ones for next step. And we learned a few different ways to do things um, when we're using the go to command. Okay. All right, that's, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. So stop recording. <laughs>